Hello there, this is Julie Leggy Tart. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to show you what I am going to do with um, a vintage curtain that I picked up from the flea market. Now, it wasn't an awfully colourful or interesting piece, but I liked the fabric. It was broadcloth. So what I've started to do is cut it into pieces um, this size. So I've done several pieces like this and my aim is to use them to make a cover for a bed or I, I may use them for book covers again because I like to do that. Um, I've already started one of the pieces. Uh, first of all, I should probably talk about um, the colourway I want to use on the pieces. I decided that I would keep it to greeny type colours uh, and um, a contrasting colour to go with it. Um, which it moves on to the pink sort of theme. I always use a, a colour wheel. So if we look at the colours of this, it is very light greens and maybe we could say it goes on to a yellowy colour as well. So if we look down to the opposites of the greens, we get the pinks and the purples. So I'm going to concentrate on those sort of colour colours. Um, I used a selection of fabrics. I just went through the fabrics I've got. Um, there's a selection and I'll go through them again shortly. Um, I did select some for one piece and I'm going to show you that. That is the piece and the cottons that I selected were just DMC cottons. I've got a couple of selections of green, um, a, a deep red and a lighter red, a yellowy mustard and this is um, a cordy cotton I got from a flea market um, so it's vintage um, but I'm sure you could still get a corded sort of cotton, I quite like it, it's nice to use. and. This is where I got to. It's really confusing. Um, so I did quite a lot of work. I only started this last night and I started it while I was watching the TV. Um, as you can see I've used a selection of different colours there um, with greens and um, some flowery fabrics. I've added in some pink and deeper red there um, and I've left some of the fabric exposed. And what I decided I would try and do is to cut out a flower from some of the fabrics that I selected and stitch one of those on each piece. This one here is a Kath Kidson flower and it's a Macintosh um, nylon fabric from Kath Kidson. I, I try and get the scrap bags from there and I get quite a few nice bits of fabric. That's also, this is very shiny uh, Macintosh fabric, again Kath Kidson. That one's um, a wool, that's just plain cotton there and uh, that's what I went with so it's quite minimal. I've done quite a lot of stem stitch and I've um, started to outline the leaves that were on there. Quite a lot of running stitch, so I've done some bullion stitches there. I've done some ordinary stem stitch there just in different directions. Uh, fly stitch I've also done some lazy daisies on there and there are some uh, French knots there and with the bullion that's just an extension on a, a French knot really and I will, I will show you how to do a bullion stitch. I realised that I didn't um, demonstrate that um, in my last video as I said that I would. Um, I am like you sort of learning as I go along, I'm getting more experience and just thought to my journey I could share it with you and hopefully you might want to try similar things. Okay, so what we'll do next first I think is choose some fabrics to go onto the next piece. Right, if I bring those down, see all I, I just had to look through what I'd got because I don't like to go out, I've got so much fabric and it's a case of using what I've got, it's not always ideal. But it's amazing how things do blend in as you go along. So for this one, I think we'll, that's quite nice. So we'll have a piece of that. I do feel that that's rather, that's rather large. So I'll cut a piece of that off. 
I do tend to, to rip fabric, so just rip that there. Another piece across there. And let's have a look at the colour. No, that's not quite right. I quite like that piece. This is um, a silk type fabric. Japanese inspired. So I'll we'll have that one there. For now I'll just pin these on. If I just select some fabric pieces, I can change them about later. Uh, have a, more of a think about it and see what looks right. I think something plain would be nice. I think we'll go for some darker green and I'll go for a, a longish strip of that, I think. There we go. Oops. I like the the raw edge of fabric when you actually rip it as opposed to cutting it. But, um, let's have a look. So, but like I say, I'm not going to cover all of the, the fabric, but um, I think we'll cover some of those this time. And go on to there, that's it. I tend to do it all a little bit spontaneously. There's always the op option to change it around. Sometimes you can procrastinate that much that you never get down to doing anything. So I always make a point of just, just going for it, really. And I'm only going to have one more piece. I'm going to put them all fairly centrally this time. Just pin that on. So that's the way I sort of go about choosing my fabrics. Now, my aim is to put one flower cut out from a piece of fabric onto each piece. So let's have a look what I've got. I've got that one with flowers on. I've got the same fabric that I used before with the flower on. Ah, oh, I've got one that I already cut out. To bear with me and there's another one so let's have a look that's all I've got out at the moment with this batch now that's that's very purple I think yeah let's go with that I'll go with that because it's already cut out and it um, saves you having to watch me cut out a flower but basically I find all my fabrics with flowers on and then choose a the flower each time to put onto the piece or panel. So that will be my next one. And it's amazing how much different it looks when it's been stitched. What I will do is I'll cho choose more purple um, cottons and probably some more garden green to go on this and um, see how that goes. And there is some lime green in this um, flower so I'll probably add some much brighter green on this panel. Right, okay so I'm going to move those out of the way and bring this one back down. Right and so you can do some stitching. Right I've got the corded cotton which is a green colour and um, I think what we'll do um, I'll show you how to do some bullion stitches. Now bullion stitches are quite tricky to get the hang off um, to start with but um, if you start with um, like you're going to do a running stitch but um, don't complete it so if you pull the stitch through as if you was going to do a running stitch and then take your cotton make sure it's going underneath the wrap it around your needle and make it the length of the the back stitch that you've push, pulled through for and then hold on to your cotton and pull pull through so you pull it right through now the idea is you're going to pull back on your the 
back stitch and sew back sew that down so you're actually pulling the coil back down and stitching that in and then you'll get your I don't know if you can see that you get your coiled uh, bullion stitch I did quite a few smaller ones as you can see they're all put together in a little collection uh, yesterday I'll just do one more by the side I'll probably do a row here so if you go into your fabric and do it so you're going to do a back stitch but don't complete it then wrap your cotton around your needle enough times for it to be long enough to turn back on itself so hold on to it with your thumb pull it through pull the cotton through hold on to it and then you've got your you cord with that you need to turn it back on itself and then put the needle in so I've got a couple of bullion stitches there I will show you on um, a separate piece of cotton and see whether that help, helps I'm just going to do another sort of row of um, satin stitches but long do quite wide what I'm aiming for is to do this sort of um, pattern as you can see in the yellow cotton there you can see that but I'm going to take the satin stitch I'm going to do a row of four So row of four and then I'm going to do change the angle I'm going to do a row of four going down as well And then I'm going to go horizontal again. Two, three, and four. Um, I plan would be to carry on with that right down to the bottom and you see you're getting a, a bit of a line and I'll continue with that line across the bottom to meet this green fabric um, but I'll give you a catch up next time I do a video and I'll show you my progress pop that out of the way all right so here we go to do a bullion stitch let's do it at this angle so thread your needle um, depending on which uh, cottons you use you will get a different um, effect from the bullion stitch um, I think the corded cotton works quite well to be honest um, you get a, it defines the coils quite well so what you're going to do is do half a back stitch so you're going to do it so you're going to do a back stitch but not pull your needle right through then you're going to wrap your cotton around and you need to do enough so that it's your coils long enough to pull back over the stitch. Right, so we're going to pull that through and you can see I'm holding on to the, the coils and as you can see it there you've got your coils and you're going to pull those back over themselves and put the, the needle back through. And then you'll get your bullion stitch. I'll do one more. So start the beginning. So if you put your needle through, 
halfway so you're going to do your black stitch now depending on how long you want the bullion stitch to be that's how large or small you'll make your back stitch and then obviously you need to wrap your cotton around so it's sufficient coils to cover the length of the the back stitch you've actually put there and you pull that through I'm using quite thick um, canvas here so it's quite difficult getting my needle through so once you've got it through you get got your coil and you're going to pull that coil back down and sew it into place so all the time remember you you sort you, you're making your coil that way on the stitch then you're pulling it through and then stitching it back to where you would have done your back stitch so that's a couple of bullion stitches now you can do lots of different things with bullion stitches. You can do smaller ones and build them up into flower shapes. You can actually do them, bend them and so that they're, they're curved. Um, but I think practice the straight one first um, until you get the hang of it. Okay, so to finish off, I'll just show a couple of other things that I've got on the go. Um, another thing I decided to do, and this is just the past time, I've got a strip a fabric and again just been sewing on little bits of fabric and I find that this is useful just using up your, your scraps and I've already started stitching on this but I just thought I'd show you um, and what another project that I'm um, sort of uh, working on at the moment and I've also just recently done a blue colourway just a, a square piece of um, slow st stitching. This one I kept a darker colour so blues and um, reds, turquoise and I used some denim. Uh, I've still got some more stitching to do on this. Um, I decided to cut out hearts and put little hearts on as well. So that's another sort of project I've got on the go. Okay thank you for watching I'll see you next time.